had wanted to do a solo record for about five years or so, and I thought about it, and I knew I didn't want to do just a straight up fiddle tune record, and I didn't really know what else I could do. Um, because I had gotten so comfortable with like my role in the band as a third of this band. And, but then in the last five or six years, at the, about the same time, we started doing this show at Largo, the Watkins Family Hour, which was a really great opportunity to just mess around singing songs that we liked and also experiment with new songs. And it provided an outlet to play new material that hadn't necessarily been arranged and worked up by the whole band. That provided me with a lot more, um, a lot more focus and a lot more options in terms of what I wanted to do for a record. For every day of work on the Illinois River, get a half a day off with pay on a towboat building up barges on a long hot summer day. Two or three years ago. We saw John Paul Jones at the uh, Cambridge Folk Festival. Hadn't seen him in a little while. And uh, he came up after uh, our performance there on a side stage and... I said, if you make a solo record and I don't produce it, I'm not going to speak to you again. I was thrilled that he was that excited about it. And he actually stayed with it. We kept in touch. It was an email production for, for the first half of it. It was a perfect time to start transferring over the creative energy. We were just sending back ideas back and forth uh, across the pond. And then he came out to Carlsbad, where I live, Carlsbad, California, and stayed in town. And we worked through the songs and played through them. We went to LA, played with a bunch of the guys that were going to be recording it. Basically, we did, uh, we had a, like a Los Angeles segment, and then we flew to Nashville. So we did half in Los Angeles track-wise and half in Nashville. With a lot of the guys um, who I'd gotten to know during the Watkins family hour, Greg Lees, Ben Montench, uh, John Bryan donated time and instruments and he plays on a bunch of it, um, Pete Thomas, uh, Sebastian Steinberg, John Paul Jones plays on it, Sean, my brother Sean. Tim O'Brien came and did some singing, uh, Raina Gellert from Uncle Earl, Ronnie McCurry from Dale's band. Uh, Mark Schatz, of course, who was who plays with Nickel Creek, well, had played with Nickel Creek a lot and was you know, a big friend of everybody's. Great bass player, uh, Byron House, um, various other people, <laughs> a lot of people. One of my favorite things about his production style was how he allowed the band to feel like a band. I like to record in, in large rooms where everybody can see each other. And we're all in the same place, and um, and the studios that we recorded in um, Henson in Los Angeles, which was the old A and M Charlie Chaplin place, and Sound Emporium in Nashville, were both um, <coughs> old school big rooms, and they have a vocal booth built into the corner, and so Sarah went straight into the into the booth, so we can all see her and and. Uh, and she can hear what's going on. And she rehearsed the songs as the, the studio band was rehearsing. And so by the time everybody had their song together, so had she. And so we did it old styley live, you know, which was, for me, is a great feel. And it's a great opportunity because not a lot of people do that these days. That has a lot to do with the sound of the record being um, band oriented. And especially considering there's a lot of different musicians coming in and out yet it still feels like a band. And I think that's because he allowed all the musicians, all of us to play for each other and perform for each other.